space history is being made in Europe this summer because the Rosetta probe has just caught up with the comet and is now going to spend 12 months flying alongside. We have special access to the team behind the mission, so let's see how the comet hunters are doing. When Rosetta calls, the world's media answers. Over a hundred journalists from all over the world were at the European Space Operations Centre in Germany to witness the moment when the comet-hunting spacecraft caught its prey. Well, we're there, and <laughs> we've rendezvoused. Uh, we've done the next step, the, the, the big milestone, which was to rendezvous with a comet. Now we get to ride along for over a year. And this is what Rosetta has spent 10 years hunting, a comet called 67P churyumov gerasimenko To everyone's surprise, it looks like two lumps of dusty ice stuck together. It's a strange comet. We thought of lots of different possibilities for the shape, but I don't think anyone was expecting a rubber duck. The shape is amazing. Scientifically, it's uh, probably the most exciting object you could imagine, maybe even beyond the imagination. The photos of the comet were taken by a camera called Osiris, an instrument managed by Holger Six. It uses a sensor similar to those found in digital cameras to capture the detailed images of the comet. Well, let me open this and then you'll see it straight. So this is the, uh, the eye of Rosetta. And we see a lot of details. Boulders over here, which are house size. You remember, this is eight meters per pixel, so we see uh, uh, shadows thrown by uh, big boulders, big stuff which is uh, out there in these uh, flat regions. Comet 67P takes 12 hours to rotate in space, meaning Rosetta's 11 instruments have a good chance to scan it carefully from top to toe. This is the real axis of rotation uh, um, shown in the movie. So it rotates this way. This is uh, north up. This is the South Pole, uh, which is uh, not in uh, light now. So it's rotating this way. And uh, funny enough, this is the, uh, the equator of our nucleus. Nobody has ever managed to stay this close to a comet before, face to face with an unknown world. The flight team are now in the middle of some of the most complex maneuvers ever attempted in space. Now that we have arrived at the comet, we have to start characterizing this object. This object has already a very strange shape, and with the spacecraft, we are coming in from this direction. Imagine the sun is somewhere here. And we want to map this object from several angles. So what we are going to fly in the very beginning is very strange orbits, almost a triangular shape, something like this, that allows us to view the object from different angles. And with this, we can reconstruct its shape. As you can see, these arcs that we are flying right now in August are bent by the, tra by the gravity of the comet itself. And this is what we want to measure. We use the spacecraft itself as a sensor for the gravity of the comet. Demand for that gravity map is high. The operations team and scientists need it in September if the mission's plan is to stay on track. This is fundamental what we are doing these days for the continuation of the, of the mission. If we are not characterizing the comet properly, we cannot fly around it. We have to learn to fly around the comet while we are flying around the comet. And this is a sort of self-referencing problem and we have to sort it out within a couple of weeks. Rosetta is doing something so new because scientists really want to understand comets in detail. There are millions of them out beyond Jupiter, and they're some of the most primitive bodies in our solar system. Because they're so old, they offer a record of the molecules that were present when our planet was formed 4.5 billion years ago. They have uh, brought the water we are made from and uh, the water we drink every day. So there is a link 
from between Earth and life and the comets, and they tell us uh, the story of the thermal and the chemical uh, evolution of the early solar system. For the next year, Comet 67P will be scanned and snapped by Rosetta and poked and prodded by the Philae lander. This little probe should drop down and drill into the dusty surface in November. Before then, the comet hunting team have to decide on a good landing zone that suits the scientists and the technical needs of Philae. Naively, I could say, well, we want a nice flat place to land, but that could indicate that there's a lot of um, fast turning over evolution of that surface, that it actually might be fluid in nature. So you don't actually want to land on it because it might be evolving on quite short terms, time scales. So yeah, it's all that to consider at the moment. The Rosetta team are in almost continuous contact with their spacecraft, keeping a watchful eye on a machine that has already done 6.4 billion kilometers around the solar system. This satellite works really well, especially when you think that it's a satellite that's been in flight for 10 years already. That's the age when most satellites have finished their missions. They're almost in retirement. Rosetta has just started to work, so I think there are plenty of people who are envious of our satellite. Plans to come? Well, you know, once we've got plenty of people are curious too, judging by the media attention. For those involved, it's a special time. Emotion and uh, and uh, so enthusiastic, like like little kids at Christmas. Uh, I think everybody here gets now the the real feeling of what we are living, and this is a real historical moment. Nothing else comes close to this: the exploration, the science, and just the wow factor. My son told me he wants to be a scientist, and that's only in the last year since I've been working on Rosetta. So, job done. Rosetta is one of the most exciting missions of recent years, but it's not the only spacecraft up there, so let's have a look at some more news from the universe this month. Seven months after launch, the Gaia spacecraft has begun its massive task of surveying a billion stars in our galaxy. The ESA mission will create a detailed 3D map of the Milky Way and help us better understand how it formed and evolved. This is what the surface of the planet Mercury really looks like. The images come from NASA's Messenger spacecraft, which has also found signs of volcanic activity and large amounts of water ice inside the shadows of craters. And Italian astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti has been training with NASA in Houston, learning about the American parts of the International Space Station. In November, the former fighter pilot blasts off on a six-month ESA mission to space. That's it for now. Of course, we'll have an update from the Rosetta team next month and we'll be taking a close look at our planetary neighbour, Venus. See you then.